good weather today, good spirits, and I uh, thought the last two practices had a lot of energy yesterday, and I was probably a little worried more about today, and uh, they came out and had a good physical practice. Um, tough prep, because we don't know what the quarterback situation is really going to be. It uh, looks like they'll use both of them, and then they, they have a third component, which is the Wildcat component. So there's really three things there, because uh, Bogan can throw the ball, and uh, he's a really good athlete. And they got Wildcat guys who can throw the ball, and then they've got a quarterback who is cleared enough and healthy enough to throw the ball. So they're a good physical football team. Then defensively, they're really big up front. You know, they got a couple of those guys back from last year up front. So I'm um, trying to get some looks from that, and our guys seem to be practicing well. <coughs> Speaking of Bowden, you've, you've got mobile quarterbacks and then you've got guys who yeah. return punts and, and do stuff like that. I mean, is, is that just kind of a different level from, from that regard in his terms of his athleticism? Yeah, it reminds me of Hines. You know, Hines Ward, anytime he got the ball back there at quarterback, what happens is you play a conventional coverage and you forget that the guy back there is always open. And probably the most dangerous plays he has as a football player are when he has the ball in space, a punt return, a kick return, a screen, a – and every play at quarterback is that. You know, he's sitting there with seven lanes in front of him. He can take off and run. And some of his most explosive plays the other night were third downs that were drop-back passes. So it makes you just play the game so different. It's so unusual. And uh, in, in college football, you're not used to playing that kind of game. So it makes you call the game differently. Um, in terms of the injuries, I guess, when you have multiple to, to, to your – players and everything like so, so I know it's the next man up mentality or whatever but you gotta have to give a, a reminder I guess to your players about how how they go about it about how they don't let it affect their morale as a team as an individual as far as the guys that aren't hurt being upset about the guys that are so I'm just saying in terms of those guys who aren't hurt yeah in terms of their morale in terms of how they keep going through practice yeah, I don't think it affects – I really don't think it affects those other guys. I think it, it probably – you get a little anxiety out of the backup guy who maybe hasn't played as much, or in some cases he has. But um, we got a lot of them dinged up out there. A lot of them, particularly in this last game, were in and out, in and out, and some guys still beat up out there today. But that's that's life in the SEC. I mean, to be honest with you, it's like that across the board. How close is Tyreek Stevenson to getting where you, where you want him to be? Um – Tyreek, is he had, he had a good week of practice last week, and he actually played uh, in the game when Mark Webb's uh, injury occurred. He had uh, two opportunities to, to make tackles. He missed those opportunities. One was a close sack. Um, I think that's more of an experience of playing, not a lack of ability. But those are the growing pains you have to go through when you uh, play guys that, that are getting their first uh, considerable play at time. Um, but he's still in a battle at money to play, and he's still in uh, battle at corner to play, and uh, he's still learning our defense, and he's becoming a better practice player. Coach, obviously, you, you've had a couple of busts this year, uh, uh, particularly on that right side. I, I know that every play is different, but in, in is there any is there any general summation of what has taken place over there on that that, that side in particular, where the Tennessee and, and South Carolina games similar in that how that mm -hmm. the guy's able to get open? Not at all. I mean, they're really, they really had a busted coverage against Tennessee, but it was a good design play. I mean, it was a, a double move where guys, they don't bust, you get beat. And there's kind of a difference, you know. I mean, if you bust, you don't know what to do. And then if you get beat, you get physically beat by a route. So, and we got beat on a double move against Tennessee. It happens. It's unfortunate. And you learn from it. Um, and then I guess South Carolina just had bad eyes. I mean, somebody's got somebody, they got to take them, and they don't. So it's not about the right or left side. It's not about this guy or that guy. It's not about the coverage call. It's about the discipline to do my job when it matters most, and that's what it boils down to. And we talked a long time today to our guys about explosive plays. We're 18th in the country in not giving up explosive plays defensively, and we're 30-something in offense with explosive plays. So we're trying to move up in both those, and the best way to do that is work on it. What qualifies an explosive play in that metric? Uh, that metric, I'm not sure. For us, 12 and 16. Run is 12, pass is 16. But the metric we're looking at is whatever NCAA football looks at. Is there a concern that Lawrence Cajun may be out a little longer than what you first anticipated? 
Well, it's probably week to week. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not looking good this week, but mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be week to week how fast he heals. I mean, and then kind of following up on the like on the thing on the on the close plays and everything. Just in terms of how you guys have have goals for everything, whether it be offensively or defensively, does that kind of help help you guys with with turning around, bouncing back? I guess with these defense A need to do this, this, and this. Does that help to have have this laid out? Well, we have goals every game. Our goals are extremely lofty. Like, if you came in and saw what our, what our goals are defensively and offensively, I mean, every year I'm on the coaching staff, they, everybody wants to change the goals because they're just – they're crazy goals. But we make some game-by-game like game goals. And when we don't make some, and um, you're always trying to set the goal and standard, <coughs> whether it's how many first downs you give up, red area attempts, uh, uh, three and outs. I mean, we have a, a metric that we've used for almost everything. And we haven't had a game defensively that we've made over uh, seven of our 10 goals. But to be honest, we didn't have any last year either because our goals are really high. But I think that our kids recognize that they're aspiring for excellence, not perfection, and they got to improve. But that's the same way on offense. So we, we have high targets, and we aim high and try to hit them. How has Nolan Smith progressed so far this season? Uh, you know, he's he made a heck of a play in the game late. Uh, he's an effort guy. You know, he runs that quarterback down late in the game and um, just extremely uh, a good effort. He had two times that he's, you know, that, that he's right all over the quarterback as he's throwing the ball on boots and nakeds, and that was a really athletic guy. So I think he's improving rapidly. He played the counter well, which is, you know, one of his pitfalls is going to be playing uh, run against big people, and he did an excellent job squeezing and bouncing back. I mean, he continues to get better and show promise, and we're playing him quite a bit. Heard you mention some of the guys that they have that are big on the uh, defensive line. Uh, what's the key for you guys on the offensive line to get movement uh, better than you did last week? Uh, you know, I would say consistency. Again, I mean, when you have a rush efficiency goal to be uh, a high level and you make it, but yet you don't make your run average, it's it's tough because you're sitting there going that you're over 56 percent efficient. We've never lost a game that we've been over 50 percent efficient run. So for these guys, it's different. It's a completely different style. They are more of a four three style last week. These guys are more of a three four style, similar to us. But they're playing more over this year than they have in the past. They got really big physical guys. Um, it'll be important to get movement, but it'll also be important to um, allow the backs to cut back, find lanes to get the ball in the perimeter as well. So uh, it's always important up front that you can establish movement and displacements, what I like to call it. If you can get displacement, then that's big. We had some good displacement last week. We just didn't do it consistently. How much uh, has the shuffling around um, with guys being dinged up messed with continuity? I mean, I know it's next man up and all that stuff, but some guys may be doing some stuff that they're not quite as familiar with and making that transition in game. As far as what, what position? Well, like Cade, like Cade moving over to left guard. I mean, I, I know he's probably practiced there some, but hasn't played there a ton in game, stuff like that. I don't know that that's – I mean, they, they all get, they, they all practice everywhere. Now, that was unique when they had to flip sides in the game, but I don't think that had a major, uh, major impact on the game. I mean, that wasn't uh, – it was just a lot of guys going shuffling in and out, and they do that every day at practice. I mean, we practice – Different line. We have to because you can't practice the same guys in the same spot when guys are injured. Because you got to have a backup ready to go, and you want your best player on the field. You don't want your fourth left guard to go in because he's the only one that took reps at left guard. So uh, we flip those guys and give them looks and uh, try to do a good job of it and trying to get them healthy as we can right now. It's the toughest thing. When you watch Nolan play, is there anybody that comes to mind in terms of comparisons, or is he kind of in his own mold of a player? Who's that? Nolan. Oh, he's a, a high motor guy. I mean, I don't. Nobody really jumps off the page. I mean, it's just he can play so athletic and so fast and so explosive that I don't think people account for how twitchy he is up there. And he's really disruptive. And uh, he's a good compliment to Aziz because Aziz has been a good run defender for us. Um, and Nolan's been a, a, a good uh, movement guy. He's quick. And, but I don't know who you'd compare him to. How tough is it for, for young receivers to become accustomed to the type of press coverage that they get? in this league. Is there typically a, a pretty steep learning curve there? Is that something that the light just comes on? And... No, I still, I mean, our league's different now. I mean, they, even out there at practice, we, we've got, you know, 
good corners that, that during camp, when you go up and press on people and get your hands on them, you can affect the timing of people. This is a press league. I mean, you're going to go play South Carolina, Florida, LSU, Alabama. I mean, every team across the board likes to get their hands on you and uh, try to disrupt timing. So it, would, it didn't matter if you're a freshman all the way up to a senior. You, you better be the attacker and not getting attacked at wide out because if you let them, they'll, they'll maul you in this league. What's uh, Trayvon Walker dealing with? How long might he be out? Uh, he had uh, a couple weeks ago, um, or no, it was last week, I guess it was, before. I forget what it was. Y'all asked me something. He had something bothering him, and then they ended up finding out what it was. He had to get a surgery on his wrist, but he's expected back uh, real soon, like next week. How do you feel about the communication of the, the play call coming in to – Much better since I talked about it the, since the last uh, time. Well, I forget when it was when I was so frustrated to have the Notre Dame game. It's been uh, much cleaner. We've done a lot of things at practice to clean it up in the last couple of weeks. It's been much more efficient coming in. I didn't know if that had any impact on the you know, We talked about it the other day. Me. We talked about it the other day. It had no impact on that play. That play was in early. In regard, I mean, I guess kind of in the same vein, um, James Coley sat through six games. What, how, what do you feel like he's done well as a coordinator? What's kind of your overall evaluation of him? I talked about it the other day. Again, I'm, I'm not judging and, and basing things on that. I mean, that's not for us for public opinion. I think that right now offensively we've got an identity that we've got to create more explosive plays. We cannot turn the ball over. And if you don't turn the ball over, you're really not talking about a lot of things because when you go back and watch the tape, there was a lot of successful runs in there, as many as there were that weren't. And like I said, we've never lost a game that we were efficient in the run game. It's hard to make our efficiency chart, and we made it. Now, again, some of those are third and ones. Do you get a two-yard game? That's a successful run on third and one. If it's third and goal and you score and it's a two-yard game, it's not good for your average, but it's great for your efficiency. And uh, that's what we go off of. So, Did you all come out of that and say when, when it's – trying to get all that stuff on offense, it's about the execution, or do you kind of say, you know, we've got to do some different stuff, play calling? I think, I think I go back and I say again, that we talked about it the other day. I mean, it's simple. Don't turn the ball over. Be more explosive and win two minutes, all right? Don't let them score in two minutes. So those are three really critical factors that we got to be more explosive. The runs that we have, there was about six or seven runs in there that were over 10 yards that I would argue could be home runs. If one more guy gives a little more effort and gives a little more blocking, you got to be able to be more explosive when you get an opportunity to do that. And you got to win two minute in games, and you can't turn the ball over again. How's Jake been this week? Uh, he's been great. He's been great. I know he's, you know, everybody and Rod as well. Rod's been great. Um, Jake's been in good spirits. He's um, helping those wide outs, challenging those guys. I mean, just like he was before, he wasn't not doing that before, but probably we have more attention to detail with that now. And um, Challenging those guys outside, uh, giving them looks like they, you know, that, like we know they're going to get hard corners, and trying to get them more physical guys at the line, pressing them and things like that, so that we can simulate those looks a little better. But Jake's been great. Who has to step up with Cager out on the perimeter? Everybody. I mean, you think about it. It's 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 by committee. We got some good players out there. Matt Landers got to step up. Tyler Simmons got to step up. George got to step up. Kiaris Jackson went in the game and did some physical things. Um, Dom's got to step up. D Rob's played well at times and got to continue to play more physical. I mean, we got to use everybody we got out there when he's not out there because he is a physical presence. I mean, he's the physical guy. With Dom, is there anything in specific that he needs to be maybe a little bit better to improve and earn more playing time at wide receiver? He's playing a lot. I mean, Dom's playing quite a bit and he plays very consistent. I, like I said again, I don't, you can't play wide outs. 95 plays in a game. If you got, I don't know how many snaps. We got a ton of snaps, but you can't play 95 snaps and expect to be going real fast. But uh, he's played very. Dom is a very consistent player. His what you get in practice is what you get in the game. He is every day full effort, and he continues to improve. I mean, he's in game what seven of his career, I guess. So he and George are, are improving, and that we need him to rapidly. And then on the other end, like defensively in terms of s s stopping the uh, run. So are you pleased with the way you're at there? And then so what's kind of the, the motivation, I guess, for them to put up, put up those numbers like they are not allowing a touchdown on you? Well, again, I, I'd rather I'd rather go up a one-yard touchdown rush, touch rush than a 50-yard pass. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's they, they, we have been scored on from outside those areas at times and not as close. But uh, I do appreciate the demeanor and the pride 
because we be honest, since I've been here, we have not been real good goal line defense. We have not been a real good. I'm not saying we haven't been a run defense. We've had good run defenses, but we haven't consistently stopped people from running the ball in the red area. And we've been able to do that so far this year. And it makes it hard to score touchdowns when you're hard to run the ball on. Um, so there's a lot of areas we can improve on. You ask that on defense, a ton. Like flipping the field, like forcing three and outs, like not giving up third downs that then force us to be catching the ball on the 10-yard line on punts. I mean, there's just a thousand things that we can do better defensively. So, and the kids, have been had that explained to them. That's really important that we get turnovers. You know, we're not getting the turnovers we want. We we made our havoc rate a lot of a lot of weeks, but it wasn't last week. So it was not a uh, not where it needed to be. Two more questions. I haven't asked you lately about Juan Mathis. Kind of how his recovery is doing? How he's doing physically? He's getting closer. Um, we're hoping he's 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 getting to do more. He's able to do some 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 scout team things and do more activity, um, but he's still not cleared to play and take live reps yet, and we're hoping that'll be soon. Through two practices this week, have you noticed any change in the mindset of the offensive line from last week? I didn't think there was anything wrong with the mindset of the offensive line last week. I mean, I just have to be honest. You always want me to be honest with you. The offensive line didn't have a bad mindset last week. They didn't have a, a terrible practices. There was no moping around. Um, they played a really good defensive line with a lot of good deep players that, guess what, we're going to play more of them like them. You know what I mean? So there's been good energy out there at practice. I can promise you that. There's nobody running from work, and there's been good spirit out there.